how you doing? Right, if you want to show an indirect tax, yes, the detailed version of an indirect, indirect tax, if you want to draw this well. So many students struggle with this, it's actually really, really simple. Let's get moving. We want to label our axis first. Okay, so price and quantity, keep it really simple. Lovely. Next, draw your simple demand and supply and label your equilibrium. You see how I'm labeling as I go along? Very important technique. Never leave anything right to the end. Next, you want to show your indirect tax. You know that an indirect tax increases cost of production for firms. Uh, we're going to assume it's a unit tax, so it's a parallel shift upwards of the supply curve from S1 to let's call it S1 plus tax. New equilibrium we know is here at Q2 and P2, so draw your arrows to make reference to the fact that there is now a change in price and a change in quantity, lovely jubbly. Right, it's worth going to our checklist here. What are the key things that we're looking to show? We've already done the equilibrium, that's fine, the change in equilibrium. We want to show burdens, consumer burden, producer burden. We want to show that. We want to show the government revenue. We want to show producer revenue. We want to show welfare loss. We want to show all of these key things. How do we do it? Well, let's start by looking at government revenue. All right, so number five first. What we want to show is the value of the tax. Let's stick that on the diagram first to help us. The value of the tax is the vertical distance between the two supply curves. That's worth just sticking on. That's going to help us get to this government revenue, okay? So what we do now is we go to the new equilibrium, which is here at P2 and Q2, so this black dot. At that new equilibrium, the value of the tax is the vertical distance between the two supply curves, right? So this black line here. That black line is the value of the tax. The government generates revenue per unit, right? So that's the unit value of the tax. So times that vertical distance, which is the tax, by the number of units being produced and sold by the producer. And they end up with this box here. Okay, so that's how you show that. So this black box is the government revenue. So that's that done. The consumer pays the difference in price. So that C part of the box is how much the consumer pays. The rest is then paid by the producers. All right. We want to show producer revenue. So initially, producer revenue was P1. Let's call that A. Let's call that 0. So initial producer revenue was P1, A, Q1. 0. New producer revenue is now only, let's call that B and let's call that C. It's only B, C, Q2, 0 because that big black box goes to the government. So all that's left for the producer is B, C, Q2, 0. You might think, oh, but that produce, that's uh, um, charging a price of P2, so they should be getting this entire rectangle, but no, a big chunk of it is, goes, is going to the government, hence they only get B, C, Q2, 0. All right? and the last thing to show is the welfare loss, and that is this black triangle here. All right, so for detailed understanding of why all of these things are where they are, watch my video, detailed video on your tax, but this is just how to draw it. All right? So you've got your idea there. What I'm going to change now is the elasticity of demand. So what happens when demand is price inelastic and when demand is price elastic? Let's have a look at that. Okay, everybody, let's do the same thing, but with a very inelastic demand curve. So label our axis, price and quantity as such. Right, inelastic demand, okay, so let's do that. See, that's a very inelastic looking demand curve, quite steep, right? Let's draw the same tax as before, so S1 to S1 plus tax, the same kind of shift. Initial equilibrium is at Q1 and P1, new equilibrium is at Q2 and P2. So you can see a huge price rise, but a very, very small quantity fall. Love it. How do we show the same stuff as before? We're doing exactly the same way. All right, so let's add on again the value of the tax. So there's the tax there. So remember, go to the new equilibrium here, the vertical distance is the value of the tax, times by the number of units sold, that black box therefore is the government revenue, okay, the consumer pays the difference in price, the producer pays the rest, so much bigger consumer burden than producer burden here, the black box is the government revenue, so that's all that done, producer revenue is now only this, I'll shade it in this time, is only this 
blue box, okay? so not much producer revenue, and the welfare loss is the same triangle as before. Okay, so that there is the welfare loss. All right, so that's the technique of how to draw uh, that diagram when there is inelastic demand. Let's now finish off by showing uh, when there is price elastic demand. In fact, on this one, guys, if there was perfectly inelastic demand, just make the demand curve vertical and follow the exact same technique. All right. Okay. Demand is now price elastic. What happens? Let's have a look. Okay. The technique is exactly the same. So let's start with price and quantity. Maybe you can draw this alongside me. elastic looking demand curve this time. All right. So quite shallow like that. Let's draw a similar shift, okay, so similar tax in terms of size. Initial equilibrium here, which is a Q1 and P1. New equilibrium is here, a Q2 and P2, so a tiny price increase. Let's again stick on the value of the tax. Vertical distance between the supply curves, that's the tax. Same technique. Now let's show the government revenue. Go to the new equilibrium. The value of the tax, the vertical distance between the two supply curves, the black line, times that by the number of units sold and produced, okay, which is there. And that gives us this black box. That's now the government revenue, much, much smaller than it was before. The consumer burden is the difference in price. The producer burden is the rest. We're used to that. The new producer revenue is just going to be this blue box, all that's left for the producer once the tax has been paid. And the welfare loss, and you can see the welfare loss is now this triangle here. Okay, we can label that. Welfare loss. Alright, so three diagrams in now. You've got the technique, you've got the strategy, uh, the different stages you need to follow. Let's now go through our checklist. And for all three diagrams, you can see, did I label my axis? Yes, they were all labeled. Simple price and quantity. All the curves need to be labeled. That's really easy to forget when there's so much going on. Same with equilibrium, but we didn't forget, did we? We're good economists, right? So we got all the equilibrium correct. Uh, burdens, yeah, we got the burdens on here, producer and consumer burdens. The revenue was neatly done with the box, okay, that was shown. The producer revenue was always shown, and the welfare loss was always shown. So all the key things we had in our head, in terms of what we needed to include on the diagram, were labeled. Um, instead of shading, you might have wanted to use letters to, uh, to label these things, but we did it fine anyway. Don't forget as well to draw these diagrams big to make sure that you use a pencil and a ruler, okay? But that's how you draw these diagrams. If you need to draw a perfectly elastic demand curve, then just make this horizontal, the demand curve horizontal, and follow the same technique. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.